And welcome, everybody. I'm your host, Jim Masters. It's good to have you with us from all around the world. This is the Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series, The Jim Masters Show Live. And I welcome you and you and you. And as you know, we always start the show with a toast. Or if you're just joining us for the first time, we have lots of new viewers who are discovering our fun show all about light, levity, and love. And the other night we slipped up a little bit and we somehow we combined love and levity and we created a new word in the English language, lovity. <laughs> Lovity on the Gym Master Show Live, and everybody fell in love with Lovity, so we're using that word too. Wherever you are, this is your host, and again, it's such a pleasure and honor to have you here, and thank you so much, everybody, for all of the sharing of the links and the posts and all the amazing comments I've been getting about this uh, series. Again, as you know, you know I do this professionally as a talk show host, uh, a television personality, radio uh, journalist, actor, voiceover narrator, artist, a writer, producer, stage MC. And so many of you have wanted me to create a show like this. And during the last couple of months, as you know, things were a little quieter for everybody. We built the set, we turned on the lights, uh, used some of my uh, television background, and we sort of formulized a, a format here. And look what we've got. We've got you and us together, extraordinary guests from the worlds of television and film and music science, food, some wonderful chefs we've had with us as well. We talk about a whole host of great things. We've had deep, uh, inspiring conversations with our guests as well. Lots of levity with comedians. And, and of course, sometimes when we don't have a guest, uh, like maybe on the weekends, we do lots of viewer interaction and uh, we take you on location. I took you to the Netherlands. We took you to Red Rocks. Um, we did take you to California. When I was there on a TV shoot, we stopped by the Brady Bunch house which was amazing. And the house that was used in Pasadena for the uh, wonderful TV series, the Aaron Spelling series, Family. You may remember with, uh, of course, Seda Thompson and James Broderick and uh, Meredith Baxter Burney, Gary Frank, and Quinn Cummings, and Christy McNichol. We took you there as well. But um, the range of guests we have, it's, it's extraordinary, the amount of people. And during the course of the show, I'm going to tell you about some of the amazing guests we have from a whole host of uh, endeavors and levels of success and so much more. So if you're just joining us all around the world, this again is a uh, television and uh, just a wonderful place for you to come to smile, to perk up, because we're all about really lifting spirits here at the show. And we're here about celebrating life and celebrating you. So I toast you and you and you and you and you. Hope you have your glass. And as always, we have some uh, cast of characters here on the Gym Master Show Live. You know, we did a nostalgic show. Uh, oh, boy, it's about two months ago. And we brought out all our childhood toys and things of that nature because, you know, we wanted to provide some light and levity during these interesting times that we've been living in lately. So I brought out George Burns, who was my aunt's. Um, and this is the collector George Burns, of course, that... Um, <laughs> he's got that cigar and everything. And he's sort of my uh, sidekick. Hello, how are you? He is here. <laughs> and he sees all of you as well. So he's sort of my Ed McMahon. You know, every host has sort of their props and their set and their sidekicks. Uh, still not coming out of the bottle because uh, her powers are still not working uh, because of what we've been going through. And we're still waiting for Haji to show up so she can come out of the bottle and she can greet you. Um, she is in there. How are you doing this uh, uh, tonight, Jeannie? You're okay? Yes, master. <laughs> so she's in there. She sends her love. However, um, she can't come out yet because, again, you know, it's been a little crazy with everything going on. She lost those powers and the salons have been closed. There's your friend Silver. You wanted to see Silver, so Silver is here. We got him on a TV shoot in uh, Switzerland, and I put him on the show once during that Childhood Nostalgic Week, and you guys said keep him on the show. And again, light, levity, and love. You got your friend here, Jimmy. Another one that all of you have asked for. There he is. He greets you as well. This is a childhood toy, actually. It's all made of porcelain and uh, really, really cool. So again, we go Hollywood as well. It's all about putting a smile on your face. So we got some lights, camera, and action just for you. Lights, camera, action. 
Now we begin the show. How's your day been going, everybody? I hope you're having a good day. I hope uh, your spirits are good. And maybe you were outside gardening or maybe we live along the coast here. So we were out along the coast. We played some tennis. It was absolutely beautiful today. The weather has been gorgeous here in the northeastern United States between New York and Boston. And uh, whatever you're doing, I hope you're surrounded by love. I hope you're surrounded by family and friends. I know we can't necessarily still get together. I still have my folks in Florida and haven't been able to get on the plane to go down to see them quite yet. And so we're hoping to do that. But I certainly hope that you guys are doing well wherever you are and we'll greet our wonderful audience here. Lots of uh, viewer interaction. We've got a very special guest. I was just chatting with her and we were having a couple of good laughs. She's an amazing, amazing person. Um, she's amazing, not just for her professional capabilities, but just because of the individual that she is. She's so inspiring, she's so loving, and she really cares about people. And that's a beautiful thing when you come across people in your world, people maybe that you might have been a fan of or admired, and then, um, you get a chance to chat with them or you, you meet them and, um, and they match everything that you had envisioned. Well, I can tell you, I mentioned this to you about Carol Burnett and Florence Henderson being exactly the way you would hope that they would be, warm, affable, funny, uh, witty, approachable. My guest, Kathy Garver, is exactly like that. She's just an extraordinary individual and she's coming up in just a moment. You may remember her, of course, as Sissy. There she is right there from Family Affair and and so much more. Of course, we know her from Family Affair, grew up with her. My sister had the Mrs. Beasley doll. Uh, I had the Lost in Space robot. I was just telling her that. And uh, so we watched this series and it was a, a beloved series and still available and, you know, uh, in reruns and Amazon Prime and elsewhere. But um, she has done so much more. She is somebody that just loves life. She's a very spirited person. She's a very creative person. And uh, she's got her hands in so many extraordinary projects. And she has, even during Family Affair, she's going to school at UCLA as well. And um, you know, a little secret about her, if she didn't go into television and acting and film and stage and voiceover work, she would have been a microbiologist. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So very honored to have her here. Let's welcome some of the folks that are here. Uh, we have Renee in Iowa. Thank you very much. Good to have you with us, Renee. Looking forward to seeing Kathy. Absolutely. I'll be watching your interview with Kathy. She is an awesome actress. Carolyn, absolutely. Absolutely. You are right. Hello, Jim. Nice to see you again. I enjoy your show so much. I like to stay awake for that. This is again, Willie, who is in Holland. She's in the Netherlands. It's 1am in the Netherlands and she takes naps in the daytime. That's loyalty. And we really appreciate that. She takes naps in the daytime specifically so she can watch our show. So Willie, we thank you very much. We tip our hat to you for the loyalty. And I hope you do eventually get some sleep because you've been staying up a lot watching these shows lately. They are available in the archives at Gym Masters TV on YouTube. Happy Friday to you as well, Ernestine. Uh, we appreciate you there in North Carolina. Hello, everybody. It's finally Friday. Yes, absolutely. And Kathleen Walker, who's in New York City. Hi, Jim. Happy Friday. Good to see you as well. Christopher Joseph, who is in Ohio tonight, should be amazing with guest star Kathy Garver. Absolutely. It's, uh, you're in for a spectacular show and conversation. And uh, understanding. hi to all the friends of the Jim Masters show. Marion Kelly, New Jersey. Great to see you, Jim. Absolutely. And uh, it's been raining on and off there in Iowa. And Margie, hi, Jim. So happy to listen to you. And Kathy, hugs to both of you. Thank you for a great day with you, Jim. Thank you there in Vancouver, Washington, Margie. It's a pleasure to have you as well. So I'm very excited. We're going to get right into welcoming our very special guest because we have so much to, uh, to talk about. And of course, you know her as Sissy. However, she's had an illustrious career. She's uh, beloved and um, I am so happy to have her here on the show. Kathy Garver, best known for portraying teenage sister Sissy Davis on Family Affair the iconic CBS sitcom that ran for five seasons. And uh, that was from 1966 to 1971. 
The show holds a very special place in the hearts of millions of people, mine as well. It is the tender story, of course, of uh, three children, six-year-old twins and their 15-year-old sister from a small Midwestern Indiana town who were orphaned when their parents were killed in an accident. After a year separated among relatives, they are thrown together in New York in the penthouse, of course, apartment of the jet-setting bachelor, Uncle Bill Davis played, of course, by the extraordinary Brian Keith, and his very proper English valet, Mr. Giles French, played by another brilliant actor, Sebastian Cabot, turning their quiet life upside down overnight. Over the course of five seasons, the sitcom broke the mold of those that came before and after because it never forgot the original premise of the program. This family was created from the ashes of tragedy. While lighthearted humor ran a common thread throughout the run of the series, Uncle Bill and Mr. French and the viewers were occasionally reminded of the shattered lives from whence the children came. The result was a bold tale of perseverance and family love and, and trust and really building that, that beautiful unit of love. And that's really what that show has been so gloriously about. And that's, I think, another reason why so many people still love that show. Now, again, most fondly remembered for her starring role as Sissy in the long-running CBS international television hit Family Affair, Kathy Garber has also garnered critical acclaim in movies, stage, radio, voiceover, animation, audiobook narration. She has used her wealth of experience and education to entertain and instruct thousands of people with her exciting and successful motivational and interactive speeches and presentations. From keynote speaker to host to workshop leader, Kathy Garber has enriched the lives of those who have been able to really listen and learn from her incredible inspirational conversations. And we are so honored to have her here. Hollywood's legendary Cecil B. DeMille was one of the first to recognize Kathy's distinct talents originally hired her for a small part in the epic motion picture, The Ten Commandments. Kathy was noticed by the great director who had uh, special scenes written into the movie to highlight the little girl. This followed her first film, The Night of the Hunter, directed by Academy Award winner, Charles Larton. Kathy was born in Long Beach, California to Hayes and Rosemary Garver, joining her sister Beverly and brothers Hayes Jr. and Lance. And she entered UCLA at the precocious 15 years old at the time Kathy started working professionally. During her teenage years, Kathy added radio and stage to her burgeoning film and television career, and she has been doing it ever since. And again, here's some more photos that you may remember. This actually we're gonna talk about is a phenomenal cookbook. You might not have known that she is a prolific writer as well and has participated in some really amazing works. Here's another terrific one as well, which we'll talk about, X Child Stars, Where Are They Now? She co-authored that. And this, if you have not read this book, I have, it's amazing, Surviving Sissy. You will love this book. Um, in addition to that, she even had an opportunity to be a part of this. This of course is uh, Spider-Man's Friend, the 1980s animation. Spider-Man and his amazing friends, and she was Firestar. Isn't that cool? Absolutely. She is just extraordinary, and we are so honored to have her here on the show. Beautiful inside and out, it is my honor and pleasure to welcome to the show, Kathy Garver. Kathy, welcome to the show. We salute you, and it's a wonderful honor to have you here. Thank you so much. Here's a toast to all of those lovely people that were calling oh, in, to Renee That's and Kathleen, and there we go. Here's perfect. To, perfect. to you all, and especially to you, Jim, for putting this all together. Oh, I appreciate that, and uh, George Burns sends his best as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, say good night, Chris. Very good night, Chris. <laughs> so uh, it's a blessing to have you here, and thank you for taking the time, Kathy, to join us here on the program. I'm really honored to have you here, and I've been uh, quite an, an admirer, of, which I was mentioning to you before we went live, of your work, but also of the person that you are. Um, what was really great in learning about your story and digging deeper is you had a foundation set by your parents early on. So when you had these extraordinary opportunities in Hollywood to participate in these 
epic productions, to be involved in the Ten Commandments, to be involved in other movies, to be involved with something like a beloved sitcom like Family Affair, you had this wonderful structure of love and support from your parents that sometimes other child stars or just other children in general don't have. And that was a wonderful comfort for you to pursue this wonderful career you've had even more, the love of the support of the parents, right? Absolutely. That I was so blessed to have my mom and my dad and my brothers and sisters and my brother and sister today still support me so strongly. And when I was writing the ex-child star books, there were so many tragedies of child stars because they didn't have that really strong foundation. Um, so many of their parents took their money and uh, spent it for the, either the other family or on themselves. And so when the child got to be 18, like even Johnny Whitaker that was on our show, I mean, he really did not have everything that he earned. Um, and poor Anissa, you know, unfortunately yeah. um, took drugs and took an overdose. Johnny was on drugs and, and alcohol and he was losing a lot of his money. And so his uh, family came and they said, look, if you don't get off drugs, we're going to divorce you as a family, mm. as a whole family. So that really got to him and he was able to turn his life around, which was what's good. Absolutely, absolutely. So for you, uh what were, what were those first inklings of inspiration in your life's journey when people started to realize that you had this entertainment bug, you had the chops for acting and for performing and presenting? Um, was it early, early on? Because you started acting at like age three, I think it is. I was a Meglin kitty. Uh, Ethel Meglin had the Meglin Studios in Hollywood, and that's where Shirley Temple was discovered. So of course my mother thought it was going to be the next Shirley Temple and I had little curls and all of that. I didn't exactly go that road, but I certainly learned how to sing and to dance. And so when I got an agent, one of the uh, first things that I did was to do the 10 commandments. Now, not, not the uh, old one, not the silent version, but the one, I'm not that old, but with uh, Charlton Heston. Yeah. And so I was just hired among the hordes of extras to be in this movie. And mm -hmm. I thought that was thrilling. This was really fun. And so I remember being on this rickety wagon and going through the dirt roads that they had built at Paramount uh, with like paper mache mountains and all of that. And all of a sudden I heard this big voice cry out, don't let that little girl's face get in the camera. Yeah. And I said, uh oh, did I do something wrong? I right. Said, Who is that? Is that God? Well, yeah. it wasn't God. I mean, I was doing the Ten Commandments, but it wasn't God, but it was a cinematic deity, and that was Cecil B. DeMille. And so the reason that he didn't want my face in the camera, because he had the idea that he was going to write some scenes for me in the movie. Now he was want to do that because he did, you know, such these grandiose epics that you would lose maybe sometimes the heart. He didn't want to lose the heart of that. If right. you remember, if you've seen the 10 commandments mm -hmm. where these walls were going to close in on this little lady and it showed then where Charlton Heston says no. And he, you know, helped make those walls go away and rescue her. Those, little points were very important when he was like doing the Ten Commandments. So I did that scene. I got off of the, the wagon and the associate producer uh, came over to me and introduced me to the great DeMille. And uh, after that, I had all these scenes written into the movie for me. So that was my epic and blessed beginning. That is epic and blessed. And did the acting bug bite you right then and there? Did you say, I kind of like this. I, I'd like to do this more. Because some kids might be, you know, uh, nervous or fearful being on such an epic production as the Ten Commandments with all of the cast and all of the, you know, the moving parts with a production like that. Did you know right then and there, I really like this? Well, 
I had appeared on the stage at the Shrine Auditorium where they had the Oscars and everything before they moved, where they did Aida with giant elephants going across stage. So here I am, three years old and four years old on this great big stage and, and tap dancing and singing. And I said, well, I like that. So, hey, the Ten Commandments piece of cake. So then take us from the Ten Commandments to how this opportunity with Family Affair came about for you. Well, after Ten Commandments, I was in all kinds of television shows and radio shows. And so I was very prepared. And I, at UCLA, I started, uh, well, <laughs> working as well as studying. I went away for, there, there, is a, there is a stage as I'm sure every parent or anyone recognizes when you are a tweener and you don't really know who you are or what you want to be. And you are trying to figure out all of those things that will help you to be an adult. So I was fortunate in the fact that I was able to escape to a small town when I was 13 and didn't have the glaring lights on me to to be more than I could be because I didn't know who I was at that time. No, no teenager, preteen does. So I was in San Bernardino for three years and I still have my best friends, <laughs> my high school friends, I'm sure. So many of your listeners, you, you look back, who are my really good, you mean my high school friends? That's where you develop your personality when people tell you what to do. So. Um, I started UCLA, I went back to LA and started working in the Patty Duke show and, and other shows. And then I was called in for this interview. So my mom calls me at the sorority and says, they are looking for someone to be a co-star star in this new television series called Family Affair. Now they had all the other people cast except for that one person. They need to see you that they needed to see me that afternoon. I was at in Westwood. We had to go to Hollywood. She says the only thing is they want a blonde, blue-eyed person. Mm. Well, now I have brown eyes, and I really wasn't blonde at that time. So my dear mother came over and she sprayed my hair with this stuff in the '60s. You probably don't know about the '60s that much, Jim, but <laughs> in the '60s they had this stuff. If you put it on your hair. It instantly changed the color. Only my mom did this and it was like, you know, this helmet. It was just like this. So, but we sped over there and I, I dressed young. I was a little bit over the 15 that they wanted. So I'm chatting with one of the uh, producer creators, Ed Hartman. And he said, what's the matter with your hair? Yeah. <laughs> I said, my hair. <laughs> and he said, yes, it's turning green. Oh, well, talk about embarrassing. Yeah. Uh, I probably had a redder face than after your wonderful introduction of me. And, uh, <laughs> but we started chatting and that was fine. And then, as they say, the rest is history. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, working with that wonderful cast that they assembled was truly amazing, right? I think... Um, who was the very first cast? Was it Brian Keith that was first and then Sebastian and then Johnny? And then is that how they did it? Yeah, it was Glenn Ford first. And That's Terry right, before. Yeah. And so they they uh, offered this part to Glenn Ford and he says, no, no. And at that time, it was very rare for movie stars to you know appear on the little screen. And so his agent said, no, 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 no. And Terry Thomas, they flew over from England and he says, children, I don't think so, <laughs> um, with his lisp and his, his suit. So they arrived at Brian Keith, who had just done The Parent Trap. Mm. And it was such a marvelous, uh, you know, job of that, because Brian was always associated as being this macho man with Charlton Heston, you know, and Mountain Men. But here he showed his sensitive comedic side, right. which was wonderful because, and he loved kids. So then Brian and Sebastian, and then Johnny had done the Russians are coming, the Russians are coming with Brian. So Brian recommended Johnny to them and they were, they were going to have a six year old, a 10 year old, and then a 15 year old. But then they changed it because when Anissa came, they said, oh, 
look, they are so cute together. Let's make them twins. And that's why there's kind of a gap. There right. was supposed to be somebody in the middle of the child. But right. here was the 15 year old who was actually 18 or a little older. Um, so then I came in at the end. And so the family was complete. Wow. So what was a typical day like on the set? You guys were there. Did you film several episodes in one day? How did that work as far as the structure? It was very strange because it was called the Federson Method, and it right. worked very, very well in attracting you know these movie stars to come over to television. So what they what Mr. Federson would offer them is that look, you just have to work for three months, and uh, we'll shoot all of your scenes, and then the topper is not only that, but you'll get a piece of the show. Mm. Now that was rare, not only to shoot that small amount of time, but also to own a piece of the show. So Brian said, yes, I'm going to do that. And his agent, Jimmy McHugh, said, yes, he'll do that. But what did that do to the rest of the cast? So we would be shooting all of Brian's scenes from, you know, maybe three different shows in one day. It drove the wardrobe lady and the continuity people just crazy. Oh, what, what show are we now? Oh, what did you wear? So then when Brian left, we would have to pick up all those scenes that he wasn't in, which again was a very difficult process, but hey, that's the way we did it. And we had the kids who could only work for eight hours a day and they had an hour lunch and then three of the hours had to be spent in school. So they really had precious uh, time to uh, work. And then Sebastian had some, um, physical problems yeah. and Brian was left who was the workhorse of the show oh Kathy could come in at six and she could she was over 18 so she was the first in and the last to leave and I loved it and you probably were I'm sure as much as you played that character of uh, Sissy Davis as far as your relationship with the kids with uh, Anissa and Johnny or Buffy and Jody like a big sister to them in many ways beyond just playing that role right Kathy well yes you know and I had a very nice relationship with Anissa I'd go over to her house or she'd spend the night here Johnny came from a family of seven brothers and sisters so he had quite a large family affair of, of his own but it was great and it was wonderful being in ways mentored by Brian and Johnny uh, and, uh, and for Mr. French. And it, it was just like when I started my career, you know, how great to work with Charlton Heston and Yul Brynner and, you know, all these people. And I had then done a movie, um, The Night of the Hunter, that mm -hmm. you had mentioned that Charles Lawton directed with Shelley Winters and Robert Mitchum. And I, so I had a great big start. And then plus I, I graduated at UCLA in, in uh, well, actually in speech. That's why I talk right. so much. <laughs> I went back to get a master's in theater arts to just fill in the holes that I, I may have missed along the way. So was UCLA happening um, before Family Affair or, or uh, during Family Affair? How'd that work with the, uh, the schooling? I was already at UCLA and I had completed a couple years and then I got the job and I would go back. And at that time we were like on the, not on the semester system. So I would be able to uh, slip in a couple quarters and then go back and slip in a couple quarters. And so that's how I, I did it. That's how I graduated. Yeah, that's amazing. it's interesting that you mentioned that I wanted to be a microbiologist that would have come in very handy today, you yes. know, and, and they have ah, solved yeah. the, the COVID problem. But I've uh, but I've enjoyed being uh, an actor and a producer and a author and all of the, all of the other kinds of things that I do. do. Which I mentioned and we'll talk about some of those, too. The, the, the run of Family Affair was pretty lengthy, too. I mean, that show was it about nine years, I think, that show ran, which was amazing because, you know, a lot of shows don't run that long. People just really responded to the storyline and to the characters. You were all so real and so believable, and everybody just fell in love with all of you. Um, what was that like at that time in your life when you would receive 
not just the adulation from your peers, those in the industry, but from the public at large, when they would see you and they would feel so connected to you. I'm sure that a lot felt like you were their sister as well, or they wished that you were their sister. Well, I'll never forget after the pilot that was shown and the first episode, I was in a department store and it was coming down the escalator and this woman says, oh, I saw you last night. Could I have your autograph? And I went, what? <laughs> and I was so surprised and so shocked. And I said, oh, uh, yeah, okay. And I was a little uncomfortable and I'm nervous. And I said, well, I don't know if I like this. And then they said, "It's." Like, I forget who explained this to me, but I thought, oh, it's, it's like giving a present to somebody. And I said, oh, I like that. I like to give presents to people. I, I love that. And so that really kind of paved my, my way and my relationship with my fans whom I really love. And now, of course, we have all the autograph shows. Well, not the last three months, but I go to autograph show and I'm so happy to, to meet someone and they, they relate their memories and um, what, and, and uh, even people in the industry, I remember Laura Dern oh, yeah. and I did a, a show with her, uh, Ruby Ridge, and she came up to me and she said, you know, Kathy, I said, you meant so much to me and, and the doll, my parents were getting a divorce at the time that was uh, the lad and uh, Bruce Dern. And that was the only thing that really brought me comfort that I could hold on to and remember the show and, and the doll and you. And so that again, made me feel real good that I was actually able to help somebody in their lives. And I, well, you know, one of my missions is really, if I can comfort someone or if I can inspire someone in any way, I don't make that as a, I'm going out today and inspire somebody. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it was like when I was writing my, my uh, book, I was just writing and, well, okay, so I I was uh, acting in this film. Now I don't have any, nobody's asking me to be in a film. Oh, well, I'll do something else. Oh, okay, I think I'll start a voiceover career. Oh, okay, I've done that, but now I really would like to do a play. Oh, okay, well, I'm not, no one is um, giving me a play. Well, I think maybe I have time to write a book. So it doesn't matter. If, if something is not going as well as you would like, what else can you do? You know, and given this this um, space where we've had for two to three months, I think that it has been in some ways good for a lot of people to just sit back and take a breath and reassess and what are they doing right. and find out what they really would like to be doing. Right. You know, if they always wanted to write a, a book or a poem or learn to play an instrument, others just say, I just want to rest. I have, mm -hmm. there's been so many things that I just need that time. So I think it's important to kind of do that through your life. Is this where I really want to be going? Right. I, I concur and agree a hundred percent, Kathy, because I've often been saying to folks that I think everything that we've been experiencing in the last couple of months, uh, societal unrest, the economic situation, the, the pandemic situation, so that involves health globally and here in the United States, um, is some sort of a, a reset where maybe essences of uh, you know planet Earth, Mother Nature and the divine came together and said, you know what, those humans are not uh, taking care of this place and they're not really treating each other as well as we had hoped. Let's shake it up a little bit maybe and uh, let's see how they rise from the ashes out of all of this and hopefully you know, with more kindness and more empathy and maybe not rushing around as much and less divisiveness as well may be coming together because prior to this everybody was saying what happened to the empathy and the kindness and the friendly natured people and where would all the good people go type of thing and now we do have a very paramount situation where and time in our lives regardless of age or background or culture or any of that where we could really come together and rise from this not going back to a sense of normal but hopefully to a better. It's a great time for creativity, innovation, collaboration, entrepreneurship, uh, breathing, relaxing, connecting with loved ones. This as horrific in many ways as it has been and still is in certain ways, it could also be a gift if we embrace it as such, right? 
Yes, you know, and as you say, I think this is the, it's, it's a time that we have had to collectively take a big breath. And I mean, and just personally, I've, I've been able to put my, my two new series together, which were, were, so people liked Family Affair. So we're doing a new Family Affair. Right. And it's called a new family affair, and it's really kind of Pirandello-ish, because it's a a story within a story, and it is about family affair and the people. Because despite these things, um, people I think yearn for nostalgia. They yearn for a, a simpler time, yes. and so I think that the type of entertainment that is going to come forth, um, and even this has already been shown in clothing and styles that there's more vintage wear and things where it, it was a kinder, nicer uh, situation. And so those types of things I think are going to be very well taken um, in, in this area. And now that we can actually talk to each other without right. masks on, except for in California, we all have to wear masks. Yeah. Um, but I'm not because I'm in my house, but in public yeah. gatherings. So, so our show, I think, is you know uh, an example of, of that of, of bringing back Aunt Sissy. Um, the uh, Billy Mooney show, Lost in Space, is doing very well, and a lot of the shows that were back in time and then brought up to date. So the the problems that they're dealing with are actual problems that exist today. Right. And then my other show, which is so much fun, is uh, TV Dinners TV. And that's another nostalgic show where it's simple time, simple talk, simple food. And I, I am the host and uh, we have on classic television stars. And like our first uh, guest is Butch Patrick, you know, from the, the Monsters. Monsters. Yeah. Eddie Munster. Eddie. Eddie. Eddie, I says, Eddie, how about that? And he says, well, never let your kids wear short pants past 12. <laughs> <laughs> because that was his costume. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I, I got my kid out of short pants when he was four. Um, and now we wear the big pants. And now we wear, anyway. Yeah. Um, so, and then we're going to surprise him with Marilyn uh, Munster, who was uh, Pat Priest. Mm -hmm. And so we're making the classic dish and we have like Maryland's mashers potatoes and and um muddy uh, mud pie mockingbird mud pie for oh desserts. yeah and we have the Munster's meatloaf and we have scary green pea salad so that is our menu for the night all of you know what the first menu and recipes are going to be on on our show and then we say okay Eddie and and Butch can we, who can we call you, Eddie or Butch? What are you up to now? And so we bring the meals up to date, the classic meals with a healthier twist. We bring um, what your classic star was doing then to what they're uh, doing now. So it's TV dinners up to date. I love that. I love that. Where can people find that? We're just doing the pilot uh, in August is when we're shooting it and, and the first uh, episode. So we're not quite sure where we want to place it. Right. Um, so we have some meetings and we've got great products already done. We've got mugs and aprons and food, you know, with the our, our brand and our logo, right. uh, which is the TV dinners. We have a cookbook, the TV dinners TV cookbook, because as you showed, I've already written two cookbooks. That's right. And so um, this will be our third cookbook, but it will follow the recipes. And this is good for the people listening to your shows as well, because we're including the fans in, in the cookbook. And we also, as you've done, when they come, I have my stepson who is um, made our candles and he's going to say, well, now um, this is a, from a Facebook question and this is a tweet question. And you know, we're going to answer those. And then in the book, we have recipes from fans that we are coalescing with the classic stars recipe. So if any of you would like to send in one of your favorite recipes, you can do that on our Facebook page, which is TV Dinners TV. That is fantastic. And that's what's great. You know, um, you're, you're very uh, responsive and appreciative of the fans and those who have supported your work all these years. Right, Kathy? That means a lot to you. 
It means because, I mean, where would we be if, if nobody watched us? Right. Or, I mean, they are giving us, to me, a gift every time that I get a post from somebody or they they watch the shows. And I, I'm very interested in their lives because every life is so different and so interesting to me. Absolutely. And so there's it's a nice um, dialogue that we take on. So when you were on Family Affair, were there any episodes of the series that personally stood out for you as some of your favorites? Well, I loved being a princess. Yeah. I was from Waltz from Vienna. That is probably my favorite. First of all, I'm a quarter, um, maybe now three quarters Austrian. I, I did that DNA. I always thought it was very Irish, don't you know? And right. I had, you know, I celebrated St. Patty's Day to the very full hilt, but I wasn't as much Irish as I and French. So may, that may be why I, I cook so much. I, I, I love to cook. I love to eat. But I'm very much French. But anyway. And this, that's why you had Mr. French on set. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And in, and, and in the new family affair, we have French, who is a darling Latino who I really like. And he's, he takes care of me. And he's he's wonderful. He helps cook and, and is like my accountant and my assistant. And so French is very good. And instead of little kids, we have teenagers. It's basically the reverse of the family affair. So right. instead of having a bachelor uncle, they uh, have a single aunt. And instead of them being little kids, they're teenagers. Now, I've never been married. Aunt Sissy has never been married. And uh, all of a sudden, these, te these teenagers are on her doorstep. And what is she going to do with them? Friend! <laughs> <laughs> you can get me out of this. No. Um, but I loved that episode, not only because I was Austrian, but because I got to be a princess and, yeah. and wear a beautiful gown and be proposed to, to uh, are you going to marry this, this prince? And that stupid sissy said, no, I cannot believe that girl. Um, I believe as an actor, you know, you can't be anybody other than who you are. I mean, when I'm going to use Mary's uh, emotions, Mary's heart, Mary, you know, spirit or Allison's hair. No, uh, you are who you are. Right. And so Sissy was a very much of a, a conglomeration and an amalgam of Kathy and Sissy combined. Absolutely. So, uh, but I, I uh, so that makes you a little bit schizophrenic. And I, I do put it <laughs> on for this prince what's wrong with you i don't know i i don't know i'm like i know but that was a prince okay all right i get the point <laughs> yeah. i love it when uh <laughs> when family and fair uh wrapped up you then uh i mean you 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 didn't stop you didn't say okay i'm gonna just uh you know work in an insurance office or something yet you you we went off to israel right yes um Family Affair was like the number one show in, yeah. in Israel. And well, they didn't have a lot of stations, but it, they, I uh, did this stage musical presentation that was Danny Benov and um, Chaim Saban. Do you know who Chaim Saban is? Sure, yeah. Okay, well, for your listeners that don't know Chaim Saban, he started the a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and become a, a billionaire. He's, he's an interesting person. Anyway, Chaim and Danny thought it would be great to do the stage musical, A Family Affair in Israel. I said, okay, that's fine with me. And so they got people that look like Buffy and Jody and, and Uncle Bill, and then they brought me over. Now, the deal is it was done all in Hebrew. Now, I, I'm a... Catholic girl. I know how to speak some Latin, but I certainly didn't know how to do Hebrew. So I learned it phonetically. Yeah, we had to sing too. So, But it was really an eye opener. I really enjoyed being in, in Israel and we went to Jerusalem. And, and then I was there and I said, well, I don't want to go back to the United States. So adventuresome 20 years old, these, these 20 year olds now, you know, so then I thought, okay, I think I'm going to go to London. So I went to London and I enrolled in the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. And so I took some classes and because at that time you could do it if you were Screen Actors Guild. So I took classes there and then came back to the United States. Then I did plays all over. That was when dinner theaters were big time. That's right. Know? 
And so I did tons of dinner theaters, comedy dinner theaters, which was really fun for me. So I went from there to doing that, to doing stage plays, dinner theaters. Did you enjoy the stage plays? And was there ever a thought of Broadway or anything along those lines? Um, I, I thought of Broadway, but I'm, I'm such a Californian and a, you know, girl. And uh, it just wasn't, it wasn't in the stars. And I, I just enjoyed going to uh, the, the small theaters and meeting the people in different parts of the country. I'm a Sagittarian. I'm a traveler. I love to travel. You know, doing the same play, even on Broadway for yeah. night after night after yeah. night after night, is, is kind of inimical to my personality because I like to do different things. Right. But, you know, Broadway would have been interesting, but that certainly was never a goal or anything I really was dying to do. So then uh, you also incorporated voiceover acting as a voiceover artist in this. And that's been a big, big part of your your work and your career as well. Tell us about how you then merged into the world of voiceover. And you you had an opportunity and still have opportunities to work on some really amazing and cool projects. I had a very a, a good commercial agent and I uh, had never heard of a voiceover. And this was after Family Affair and after doing the plays. And he says, oh, well, we want you to go do a voiceover for this tuna. And I said, what's a voiceover? And he says, well, you put your voice over a picture. And so they're just going to have an animated like Charlie Tuna. Right. Said, OK. Um, and so uh, go on this interview. And I said, OK. So I went on the interview and I said, well, what's the line? You say, I like tuna. And so uh, I said, I like tuna. And then the casting uh, producer said, well, say it a different way. What do you mean a different way? You know, use a different voice. Yeah. Oh, um, I like tuna. <laughs> he says, well, no, that's not exactly what I mean. He says, say it again. I like tuna. And he says, no, say it. OK, thank you very much. <laughs> and I said, hey, you know what? I have to learn something about how to do a voiceover. I was so embarrassed. So then I, I took lessons and I went to Mel Wells, who was a wonderful teacher at the time. And I had majored in speech anyway. And I was, you know, an actress to begin with. But there's just, there are skills that you have to develop to do voiceover. Mm -hmm. I taught voiceover now for 20 years. Yes. How right. to develop characters, how to do audio narration. Um, speech and diction, how to make yourself clear, looping. I've done about 90 audiobooks and won like four Audis. That's the Oscar for yes. books. Yeah, so, and, and animated series, I've done five animated series. And I, I as we were just discussing beforehand, I uh, during this COVID time, I, I'm fading away. Oh my gosh, I'm becoming mm. blurry. It's a very, it's a, it's a soft lens that used to use in the past to soften the, uh... I'm liking this. I look <laughs> years younger. Okay. Well, um, I did in the presence. It makes me feel, you know, more feminine like this. I don't like that. Okay. So I did uh, in the presence of greatness, which was Patty Duke's book that she wrote with Mr. Jankowski. And she unfortunately passed away right before. Oh, I'm back. You're I'm back. I'm yeah. back. Um, <laughs> uh, that she she passed away before she finished the book. Patty was a friend of mine. I was That's her friend. Right. Yeah. You know, Monica in doing the Patty Duke show. She was right. the forward to my book. Yeah. And so um, it was really interesting for me to record this book because I felt like I was channeling her in in very many ways, and. So I, uh, I I did that book and um, it made me sad in some ways because she wasn't here and and you know I always I wish she should, she could have gotten saved if she hadn't been in in Coeur d'Alene and they had to fly her uh, you know to another hospital in Washington but anyway yes I've been doing a lot of books. We have some wonderful comments coming in from viewers really all around the world. Um, Valerie here says, please let her know as a little girl watching her show was the highlight of my day. She's watching on YouTube right now. And uh, thank you, Valerie. Christopher says, Kathy looks as lovely today as she did then. Oh my. Uh, absolutely. Renee in Iowa. Hi, Kathy. She says, hello. Hi, Renee. Ernestine in North Carolina says, hello. Hi. Uh, Cayenne says hello, and um, my Hi. sister Lori in Florida, who had the Mrs. Beasley doll, says hello <laughs> too as well. 
Do you still have it, Lori? Right. (laughs) (laughs) That's it. So you're actually talking to uh, Kathy Garver, my sister. She's probably beside herself right now. Another Kathy, Kathleen Walker in New York City says hello as well. Hi, Uh, Kathleen. My name's Kathleen, too. I'll take you home again, Kathleen. Yeah, oh, that very Irish. Yeah, I had uh, an aunt. Catherine, but they always, she's referred to as Kitty and then Kathleen, Kathy, same thing. It's the Irish Hi. part. Hi, uh, Ken from Wisconsin. Great to see you, Kathy. Loved Family Affair. Met Brian Keith in Milwaukee in the 70s filming a movie. Ah. And my sister there in Florida, beautiful then and still beautiful Kathy. Thank you, Lori. And uh, hi, Kathy. Looking forward to hearing what you have to say. And uh, Heidi Chapman Bravo, love your interviews, Jim. You exude such warmth and positive energy. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. You've you've been talking to my mother again, huh? <laughs> yeah, I think that too. You really are a good interview. You you do your research. You you're very warm. You know what you're talking about. You get the facts right. Oh, what <laughs> you know a concept. You know, so right. it's really a, a, a pleasure. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, Willie is, this is funny. Willie is in, I mentioned in the introduction, she's in Holland in the Netherlands. Ah, yes. And it's a, approaching 2 a.m. where she is. She okay. takes naps in the day purposely so she can be up at one o'clock in the morning when our show comes on 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. So she is probably one eye open, but she has to say, hello, Kathy. I very much admire you for the amount of work you've done and are still doing. That's Willie in the Netherlands. So nice to meet you, Willie. I love Holland. Oh, what a beautiful place and tulips and I visited there. Oh, it's beautiful. There is on a, a TV uh-huh. project twice in the last two years. And it, it's a it's a very beautiful place. And um, what a great personality. Hope that you're acting as much today as you did in the past. You are. You're very, you've always been very, <laughs> yeah. even more, right? Exactly. Yeah. Very sweet, Kathy, uh, Mary Ann Kelly in New Jersey, such a kind actress and a generous person. I concur. She absolutely is. I knew everybody would uh, find this so delightful to have you on, Kathy. Kathy, you have such a wonderful personality. Now, Kathleen Walker in New York, isn't it great when, and I mentioned this to you, isn't it great when you meet somebody that you've watched on television and movies all your life, and then here they are right there in front of you, and they match what you've mm-hmm. always hoped because that isn't always the case in life, whether they're, you know, a celebrity or not. Sometimes the people that you look up to don't always exactly match. And it, it's a treat for everybody to see that Kathy is just exactly what, you know. You know, I think it's so interesting, you know, Zooming or having this um, uh, stream yard and being able actually to talk and then to see you it's it's a lot more fun than Isn't it? radio yes it, it's yeah. just so much more alive you know than, absolutely yeah i love it and uh, chris asked if you still had the mrs beasley doll and you do you have I one do. Right? You do. <laughs> yes i do chris and uh, he also says great interview kathy you have moved well with the times <laughs> And uh, also, uh, let's see, Anne Harriskin, good afternoon from Southern California. She's watching there in Southern California. Good afternoon, Anne. Great time to spend with your family and relax. Absolutely. Yeah, during this uh, sort of reset we've been going through, uh, you met Butch at a car show last summer in Iowa. That's, uh, oh, yeah, you did. Yes. Okay. He's going to, be, as I said, you, yeah, you picked up. He's going to be our first guest on TV dinners. Marianne Kelly still has her Mrs. Beasley dial. And yes, uh, Kathy still has hers as well. Uh, she says, Kathleen says, the show sounds great. You were talking about TV dinners and then uh, sort of that remake as well of um, Family Affair. Um, that's going to be terrific. So much fun. And Karen Levitt, who is a life coach up in New Hampshire, says, Miriam Kelly uh, had the Mrs. Beasley doll. It was one of my best birthday presents. <laughs> That doll really represented a lot for a lot of uh, yeah. young girls at the time. I had a Mrs. Beasley doll passed it on to my daughter. She's in Iowa. Let's see. More wonderful folks. Jody Fulvio. I still watch Family Affair. Love the show. It's my go-to show when I want to feel good. And you've probably heard that a lot over the years, right? And like you said, nostalgia. These shows that were beautifully written, beautifully shot. The effort was put in, wonderful acting, uh, heartwarming scenes, really uh, lots of empathy expressed in kindness. And, and the shows of those times, which I love, and I've shown them to 
people who are a lot younger. And I said, you know, take a look at some of these shows from the past. They all have a story. They all have a lesson. They all have a moral about getting along, about friendship, about doing the right thing, about kindness. And I think that's what's universal about a show like Family Affair and all of you a part of that show is the universal message that um, kindness and empathy and caring and love of family and all of those things that are basics in life are still true today and very important. So it ha the shows like that from the past have such great longevity because it's something that we can all still relate to no matter what the calendar says, right? Yes, and when I'm talking to the producers and the writers for the spinoff, for the new family affair with the Aunt Sissy, I said, that's what I want to, to be in the new show, that it does have heart and it's like, um, she said that it makes me feel good. I want people to feel good when they uh, when they see the show. I want them, you know, to feel. And so you, and as you say, what was one of the things that gave a lot of these classic shows such longevity was the story. Oh, again, what a concept that a show actually just has a story instead of just, you know, throwing epithets or, or jokes or this or that. But you want to know what's happening to the people. So it follows that classic style of it, starting out with some kind of a conflict or problem and then rising up to solve the problem and then the denouement. Now we're not going to have like morals, but we do have a couple interesting buttons that, you know, that we are putting on it to kind of lift it out of just the regular sitcom uh, type of show in the format. So it will be formatted differently, but it's going to have heart. At, in every show and that's what I think is is the most important thing you know and that's what we want to exude and that's the way we want to communicate which is really a beautiful thing and I think it's it's so spectacular that you have this opportunity to do that because now you know with the technology and the ability to have these connections like this um, you're able to keep this wonderful nostalgia alive and sort of tweak it for for today's times right exactly and you know and that was just giving me an idea to even use some of that technology because we're going to be doing it with warner brothers who own the the rights they they got them eventually and to use some clips from family affair to interject that and like what would uncle bill do at this time or you know there's mr french i said french now you look <laughs> I can just, I'm just thinking this up right now, but you know, imagine I said, now French, see what Mr. French would do. Now, can't you do that? <laughs> you know, and ask him, you know, to, to take on this, this mantle of, of helpfulness. <laughs> so, um, your, your son does, he lives there with you, right? You, you get, the, you have the pleasure of having your son there, right? Yes. Now, um, we lived in Northern California for about 38 years, and they uh, lived in the basement, he and his girlfriend, who had been together for six years. He's 29, mm -hmm. and I had him a little later in life. But he, um, and I, I love having their energy and around. When we move now to this new house in Southern California, they have their own entrance and their, their own like room and bathroom and suite type of thing, not a suite, but you know, place to be. And of course, they're always in the kitchen. However, now they're vegetarians, so we don't eat together a lot. <laughs> <laughs> now you like you like food, you like to cook, right? And I want to show some folks, uh, I previewed it a little bit, Kathy, in the introduction there, but uh, you have been a part of some wonderful publications. And um, let's see, was this the first one? The family That's the first one, yeah. yeah. Tell and us about the, that. This, um, each character in the show has their his, his or her own chapter. So it's like, Mr. Mr. French's very uh, elegant meals. And then mine are Sissy Sizzle's home cooked kind of meals, easy recipes for Buffy and Jody that anybody can cook. And then uh, Uncle Bill had potent potables, which is how to mix uh, cocktails, Manhattan, since we were from New York and yeah. other ones. And then it gives a synopsis of what happened to the people. So that was the, the, the first one. And then you have another one here. 
That's my latest one. Yeah. That's holiday recipes for a family affair where um, my co-author, Scott Weaver, who is also a writer on Aunt Sissy, very, you know, everyone is kind of co-joined. Lends together, yeah. Yes. And uh, so Scott, who's, who's wonderful, he's a writer, director. I've done a couple of his movies. But he was my co-author. So he wrote um, six months of a 12-month calendar. And I wrote the other ones, all the holidays that um, are in, like, January. So um, I did, like, New Year's. And then February comes the Valentine's Day and, and recipes. Meat and fish and then... Um, vegetarian meals in each one of the recipes so we can satisfy more people absolutely this like i said in the introduction i've read this book and it is really amazing and very open and authentic and honest and just very encouraging i love this book surviving oh, you. yeah tell us about what was your inspiration for writing that book kathy well um no work <laughs> I, I had, you know, I wasn't doing a movie. I wasn't filming something. I didn't have a stage play. I, I love I'm your like, honesty and authenticity. It's refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> and so I says, oh, okay. So I'm going to write this book. So I started writing the book. And then unfortunately, our house burned down I know, in 2005. Yeah. Um, so I lost a lot of the chapters. So this book was actually 10 years in the making because I recreated things and uh, my family was very kind uh, and put up with me when I was sitting in my office and I had like 100 pictures all around. I'm trying to pick out the best pictures that are going to go with the, the best text. And so it was um, it was an interesting book to to write for me, of course, because it was my own life. But it's gotten great reviews. And as I told you before, people think it's inspiring. I said, I certainly didn't mean to be inspiring. I just want to live as thoroughly and as best as I can and treasure every single day. As I've gotten older, I treasure them even more. Absolutely. And well, one of the beautiful things that is very inspiring about your story as a whole, Kathy, is the fact that going back to what I mentioned in the earlier part of our conversation together, and I don't, I don't consider this an interview. I consider this a, a conversation between people. Um, is having had that foundation set forth initially by your family structure, your parents and your, your loved ones, because the surviving sissy, a lot of times when people have, especially child stars, as we all know, um, such um, so many lights on them and, and pulling in different directions and, and the, the fame and the glamour and all of the, the trappings of it all, which can be glorious and fabulous, but if not managed right and not appreciated and not savored and not compartmentalized in a way where that you will grow from that, things can really go south quickly. And it's happened to a lot of child stars. And I know Paul Peterson created that wonderful organization in support of child stars. And I know you've been very involved with that as well. But the surviving sissy just makes you think of how you've been able to have such an extraordinary situation, 10 commandments, all of this in the early years like that, when you had all the trappings and everything right there in front of you, but it was the foundation that was given to you early by your family that kept the train on the track for you, right? Yes. You know, I, I again, I reiterate, it's just so important to to have the your family there and to support you and with this kind of unconditional love. And as you say, as as a child actor, there so many of them are pull, pushed and pulled. And they are unable really to develop a lot of life skills because as a child actor, you have someone's going to do your hair and then someone's going to choose and help you with your wardrobe and someone's going to do your makeup and someone's going to go over your lines with you. And then when you're like 12 or 13 and your series is over, your film career is not going the way you want because you're not so cute. One of the dangers is that, that kids never really learn the fundamental of acting. They they learn that they have to hit their marks and they have to memorize their lines and say them. And, you know, like 80% of the kids, you know, are hired because they look cute and they can say their lines, memorize the lines, and usually because they're are smaller <laughs> than their, their real uh, age. Uh, so they can portray younger, which the uh, casting directors really like. So one, 
they don't really learn to develop characters. All they do is play themselves and they can play it very well and they're darling. But when they grow older and you have, if you're going to stay in the business for a long time, you have to learn how to develop a character, which was interesting reading uh, Patty Duke's uh, book. Now she never really had any, uh, not only academic training, but any real theatrical training. So she would just be like a sponge whenever she worked with some of these wonderful Oscar award winners and other uh, fabulous actors. And she said, how did she do that? Hmm, now I can see her preparing. Now she's going into a mood. And so she learned that way. So one thing, the kids don't learn that. They, two, then um, the parents take the money as we've discussed. Three, unfortunately, then they get depressed. And why doesn't anybody like me? Why don't I have the, 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 all these accolades and friends? And so then they start taking drugs, which is, you know, unfortunate and, and too widespread uh, among the, in the industry. I mean, I drink wine every night, but that's, I lived in Northern California and I was right next to a vineyard, but I ne I've never taken drugs. And I really do think that, you know, that's has helped me a lot. I'm not, I'm crazy enough as it is. <laughs> need to make me any more sensitive or 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 bigger energy I, that's just my own personality um, but some of these people and their parents that were not strong enough to get them off drugs and let them go on drugs um it was you know it, it's very sad i remember in high school i started to smoke and my mother found my, my cigarettes that I kept in a sock of all, <laughs> maybe because she's, she's never going to look in my gym sock to find cigarettes. Oh, well, that was a big brouhaha, but um, that helped me stop smoking. And then when... <laughs> I'm sure it did. <laughs> <laughs> and then, though, I started smoking again in college playing bridge. And I went out, I met this fellow, and we went out on a date. And we went to Ciro's and I'm, you know, very oh, sophisticated. Right. fashionable. Yes. And took out my cigarette and he went, oh, he broke my cigarette in hell. I, just, <laughs> I could not believe it. How could he do that? So now we've been married 39 years. <laughs> <laughs> A toast. That's true love. That, that is true love. <laughs> That is fun. That is fantastic. So, um, how how have you been coping with and getting through this this having to be indoors and socially isolated? You know, you're, you're very much we're kindred spirits in many ways. That I'm a very communal person. I really feed off the energy of other people, and then I like to give it back tenfold. So now we've been in this situation for extended periods of time, where you know we can talk on the phone, we can be on the internet, we can do different things, we can get creative at home, but we don't have that one-on-one -on -one like we love and we're used to having. How have you been dealing with that and working through that, uh, through this uh, uncharted time we've been living, Kathy? Well, <laughs> I go and get the mail and then there's Kevin, the mailman. <laughs> Yeah. Hi, Kevin. Yeah. How are yeah. you? Right. This is a beautiful day. Well, look at those trees. Is that a, well? That car was speeding down the thing, wasn't it? This poor Kevin. In my mailman, I talked to my mailman the other day. He turned off his his truck. <laughs> we, we just, like he's we here. Conversation for a long time. Yeah. I come back in. David says, "Who are you talking? You know what are we doing? Why are we talking to him so long?" I said, "That was my mailman. I'm right. talking to my mailman." <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I, I, I talked to my mailman and I took my, my car the other day because it needed air pressure. So I'm sitting in the lounge waiting for the car. We're watching Dr. Phil. There is this lady with the mask on. I had my mask on. So we're chatting. We said, yeah, you know, my son's just like that. And she said, yeah, my son's like that. So then I start chattering and chattering and chattering away. And then I apologize. I said, well, I, you know, I apologize. Chatty Kathy. <laughs> yeah, it's really chatty, Kathy. You're probably you're on the show. You're thinking, does that girl ever shut up? But that was my speech, and also because I've been incarcerated. Yeah, yeah. I like the use of that word. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. And I apologize to her for talking so so much. But she probably loved it, right? I loved it. Yeah, and I she loved probably it. loved it too. Yeah. 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 Yes, I understand. I haven't, you know, I talked to my husband, but 
you know, and, and the kids, but they're kind of in and out and they've heard my stories and, and um, sometimes they don't like what I, would you please empty the dishwasher? Yeah. Can't, can't you water those, uh, you know, flowers? So sometimes they don't want to talk to me. <laughs> well, you also, that's another thing too, um, that you have been able to balance this extremely incredible career in the public eye, Kathy, but at the same time have a, a nice settled home, family life, you know, enjoy that. That's not always so easy to balance when you're being pulled in a lot of different directions in such a public figure sort of career, right? I love my family more than anything, more than yeah. anything in the whole, whole world. I love them. And, you know, I feel so badly, especially during this time, if you know someone was just alone and and i i talk to i'll call my sister whatever but my family is so important to me and i cook dinner every night for my husband and it's a big thing and and it's a fun thing to do and you know he's <laughs> he's so patient with me because i will start he'll ask me something and then i'll give him a whole story and he says i just wanted the bottom line kathy He's, as I said, we've been married 39 years, and but he's he's patient, and we get along. And you know, in any crisis, we're even closer together if if something happens, like like 9/11, and we're sitting there saying, "Oh my gosh, you know, how could this even be?" And when our house burned down, you know, or any crisis, it it brings us closer because we're able to share what we're really feeling and our emotions and and the togetherness. So it's uh. It, it, my, and it, my family is very, I wouldn't give them up their job, but. <laughs> <laughs> a, gig, but a, a gig is a gig. A gig is a gig. We've got to make some money here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but now I had heard in my research um, and, and chatting with you prior to going live that you, one of the things that you like to do, uh, which is very therapeutic and I'm doing it too. And I've been doing it since I think I was a kid, probably you have a, green thumb, you like to garden, you like to get out there and work in the garden and uh, nurture and, um, and and really have an opportunity to bring some beauty and sunshine and color to the world through gardening. Tell us about your love for getting out there in nature and gardening. I, I love to garden and like I like to clean up the house. I like to clean out my closets. The thing, as you know, in, in entertainment, you, you get a job and then, oh, well, now, now where's my job? You go on an audition. Am I getting this? Am I going to have this? Where, where's Aunt Sissy going to do? Doing something tangible, like actually planting something, my pansies and I, that I planted last week and, and watch them grow and I water them. And, and now the, the problem is my, my gardenias and they were going to be so pretty. And yeah. I went out four days ago and somebody's eating my gardenias. So I'm really upset about this, like that, um, what was that movie? Something's eating Gilbert Grape. Right. I don't know who ate Gilbert Grape and I don't know who is eating my gardenias because we live in this canyon and they have like skunks and opossums and lizards and snails. And I don't know which of this entire menagerie is eating my, my gardenias, but I'm going to find out um, if it's a snails you can put these stones around the the base of the gardenia and gardenias and they say it's hard for the snails to to get across that rocky path to come and you know eat so i'll, I'll see if that works or if i have to give them beer <laughs> they might like that actually <laughs> you, you bury this thing of, of a little uh, saucer in, in the dirt and you fill it with beer Mm -hmm. so I don't think my son would like me to take his beer, though. <laughs> he has to do it for the, the, the beauty of the garden. Exactly. I mentioned this, too, that you had an opportunity in, just in terms of uh, animation and working in that incredible world. This, which was kind of cool, huh? That was a Spider-Man and his amazing friends in 1980. Yes, uh, I, I love I love that show. It's still playing and doing doing a cartoon show and an animation thing. You have new um, audiences every time. This though is is more that kids can watch it, but adults will watch it as well. You know, or or young men. Young men love the the Spider Man and his amazing friends. They like Firestar a lot too. So yeah. yeah. So I enjoyed. I did uh, Chuck Norris Karate Commandos. Chuck Norris was really cool, 
I'd say Pepper in that one, not like Firestar, who is a superhero. Yeah. And then I had to Dixie from Dixie's Diner. And they made a whole toy set from that one. And that was that was a good one. And then Enya, which is anime, which is very <laughs> which is evil, evil. So anyway, I love, because I'm crazy. See, and this is why I don't take drugs. You know, you, you, well, <laughs> Kathy Garver is high on life. You're yeah. high on life. That's what it is. Yeah. That's, so. There's also, of course, this book that you uh, co-authored as well, which is very um, notable, and that is uh, X Child Stars. Where are they now? Tell us about the inspiration for being a participant in this book as well, Kathy. Well, because I had been a child star, and I had so many of my friends uh, that I still have, and I. It was something that I think needed to be said. I like to do a now and then type of thing. As you had mentioned, Paul Peterson, Paul Peterson with a minor consideration, he wrote the the um, forward to this book. He and I are really good friends and starting the minor consideration was really a wonderful thing for the kids where I had spoken before how the parents would always take the money. Well, he passed the Coogan law, helped get mm. the Coogan law passed where um, you have to take uh, money from your child's uh, paycheck and put it away in a special account called the Coogan account. It was started, you know, just for the movies, but now it, it, they, they have an addendum to even if you are just uh, you know, doing a one-off uh, and not involved in a series, they will take it out of all the child's checks. So at least they have something when they're 18. However, my son, my son was in the business and I dutifully put away his money. And uh, then when he turned 18, I said, I have a surprise for you. Um, mommy has been saving all your money in this account. And so here you're 18. It was gone in two weeks. So <laughs> that was, yeah. a little bit more, um, you know, protection or just, you know, understanding of, of how, and, and this, you know what, I was talking the other day about when you're telling someone about uh, how, how do you get into acting? What, what do you do? And I say, well, you know what? It is called show business for a reason. It isn't just all glamour and glitz and isn't it fun and I'm, I'm so fulfilled when I'm acting or being somebody else. I said, you have to learn how to um, budget your money. And it is a really important trait. And for anyone that's like an independent contractor that doesn't get paid a, a salary and know how much they're going to get for a year and you don't know, you know what your income might be from one month to the other. So you at least have to make a baseline of how much you have to pay for your bills. So then you don't go crazy and say, oh, I'm getting so much for your job, this job, and I'm going to buy these thousand dollar shoes or, you know, this, this wine, the Rothschild. And then you say, oh my goodness, I don't have any more money next month. So you have to get that right brain and left brain going together, I think. To, to be as successful and sustain a career in the business. Well, I've said my piece and it's time that I go make dinner now. <laughs> Ooh, so you, a long time. Yeah, so you so that was your parents that really instilled that in you then. Yes. The ability oh, yeah. to, yeah, yeah. I mean, my, my mother was very, I mean, she, my mom kept the books and yeah. she was very good at, she wrote down everything I did. I mean, back in the 50s and 60s and everything, she yeah. had an account of everything, how much was going to the agent, and she, and she saved every penny also. That yes. was mine. Right, you know? exactly. So. so when you look at this extraordinary career that still continues, and again, you have these amazing projects and amazing things that you're still working on, Kathy. And again, as we see, just wanted to show you again some more love that's coming your way. Um, Thank you, Kathy, for bringing us joy in our home on Family Affair. Uh, she's so refreshingly honest and so enjoyable to listen to. Uh, nothing wrong with being the kind of good kind of crazy that you are. Willie and Holland, lots of smiley faces. Thank you, Kathy, for sharing your life with us. Thank you, Jim, for your excellent ways in interviewing your guests. Always full of fun and laughter. Uh, Rosalie in New York City, great show. Um, Anne in Southern California, Jim and Kathy, this is an awesome interview, loving it. 
Arston Field. This is a wonderful interview as well. So lots of folks that are truly touched by uh, your presence here, but also at the same time, um, Renee and I were, it's been nice, so nice getting to know more about you, Kathy. When you look at this career, this journey, the people you've worked with, the people you've met, the inspiration that you've been able to project through your art, through your craft, through the arts. What are some of those things, Kathy, that continue to bring you the greatest joy and blessing in all of this that you've accomplished and still do for the greater good? Money. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I I agree. I agree. <laughs> George Burns. <laughs> but, you know, I, I do like never, making- You never comedy. thought of stand-up comedy, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting down. <laughs> um, I, it, it's, I, I li I'm very independent, and I like to make my own money. And, you know, I, I like making money. I, I like to figure out where it's going. I like to know, what well, can I buy this now? Can I buy, you know, some new petunias or- or whatever. I do um, look and I take a role. I said, and you know what? These kids, they they give you some things. And so my future daughter-in-law to be says, now you should do these affirmations. I said, oh, okay, what are they? And I says, well, I attract abundance. I am kind and I attract kindness. Um, and I, you know, all of these things that, you know, you, you say, and so I say, oh, okay. I say, what I really like to do is if I'm taking something and I have a project, I, I want to do it the very best I can. And I, I hope that some, you know, that it's inspirational for someone, but just to say, wow, that was, that was a job well done. Um, so th that's, that's important to me. So, and as I say, I, I've always, I am, I'm really kind of proud of my career because I've always done really good projects and not that you know it's just that good things have come to me as that's one of those affirmations thing I, I i attract you know healthy relationships so things that have been offered to me have been really nice parts and good parts and that could be from <laughs> i started out taking balance and doing family affair which is probably the the tamest most wholesome show that one could ever watch um, but there was, but you know what? It doesn't matter because there is a depth yeah. that that goes on in any good project. Yeah. And even though it was sweet and it was nice, it can go up against any drama because it has the heart and the depth that I think should be in any project, you know, because that's where we live. We live from heart to heart. Right. And that's what I think. Is there anything you haven't done yet that you still that's on your bucket list of things you'd like to do? I had um, a beautiful river cruise planned in June, <laughs> right? Yeah, and I would be on it right now and going past Austria. We talked about how beautiful Austria is and Vienna. Yes, and but things and there's another thing, things always happen for a reason. I'm working on a project with uh, Lloyd Schwartz that did the Brady Bunch one and two and yeah. 180,000, um, who I, I love. And so Lloyd has this great project about a movie on a river cruise. So I just talked to the river cruise people mm -hmm. yesterday. I said, now, are you getting these cruises back on? Because I've talked to them about doing the movie on the, the boat, on the ship. So that might be a better way to, to enjoy the last of my bucket list, but then I'd have to die. <laughs> so we're gonna have to think of something else to do too absolutely so energetic love sissy and family affair and uh just the comments keep coming in kathy you really are a beautiful spirit and a wonderful ray of sunshine and uh thank you so much for all of the wonderful times that you've shared with us through your craft through your love of what you do and um much more again success coming your way and continued blessings coming your way and joy with tv dinners with aunt sissy with all of these wonderful things and again you are so wonderful with the folks who have supported you all these years and a lot of the folks around the world that are watching right now uh, are getting a real sense of who you are and um, it's been an honor for me uh, as an admirer but also somebody within 
the industry to thank you very much for, for taking this amount of time and gracing us with your eloquent and elegant presence. And I wish you- Wow, <laughs> such beautiful words. My goodness, that is so kind, Jim. But you know, you're, you are really a good interviewer. You, you uh, listen to the person and you have your own warmth. That's just, I mean, I can feel it coming over to my little square. So I'm coming over to your square, but it, it really is, is really phenomenal. I like it. And, and if any of your listeners would like to be my friend, they can go on my Facebook, onto my Facebook friend fan page, because my other one is um, filled up. So, you know, please come in and we can be friends on my Facebook fan page. Or if you want any of the books, here comes the promotional part of, of yeah. that. You can, you can go to my website and get any of the books which is kathygarver.com, or you go to amazon.com. They're all on Amazon. Isn't everything? Everything. You know? Yeah, <laughs> everything. everything. These days it is. <laughs> I just got these little dots that when you close the cabinet door, they don't make a big noise because that was bothering my husband. So now we have closed, uh, soft closing cabinets from the little plastic things. I mean, I can't believe they said out a whole truck just for these, this little package of, of plastic dots that go there. But Well, you said you yeah. love flowers and you loved Holland and the Netherlands. So there you go. Here's a bouquet from the <laughs> Netherlands when we got on our TV shoot. These are hand painted and they're made of wood. Could you imagine oh, that? Beautiful virtual tulips. I love them. Isn't that amazing? They're gorgeous. I love tulips. Kathy, thank you very much again. Thank a you. real delight. And every the comments are still pouring in. Everybody says she's a ray of sunshine, authentic. Love her honesty, love her humor, love her levity. I hope we get a chance one of these days in this crazy industry maybe to meet. That would be a pleasure and an honor. And I thank you for uh, bringing us into your home as you're here into mine and sharing this wonderful evening with us. It's It was well, amazing. Thank, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Love you. Maybe we'll work together, actually, and thank all of your wonderful listeners. It's it's really fun to have that interactive thing and to meet Renee and Kathleen and and everyone and and Willie <laughs> in Holland. You know, pick a pick up a uh, tulip for me. And Renee just found your page already, and she just liked it. Uh, thanks, Renee. Thanks for sharing, love your attitude on life, and uh, such a sweet lady. Love this interview so much. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, loved her, great interview, and so much more. So always nice to, to wrap on a high note like that. Blessings to you, Kathy, and I, I toast you. you once again. Yeah, right, everything's already reversed, right? Yeah, I did that way. And our usual toast on the show, blessings, all the joy of life, and thank you for everything, Kathy. You're trying to find, there it is. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> there it is, clang, right? Don't go hey. Don't spill it on your keyboard. <laughs> Nothing in it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. Go make dinner. What's for dinner tonight? Everybody wants to know what Kathy Garver is having for dinner. Well, we're having raviolis, a cheese Ooh. and spinach raviolis with a caprese salad, which is tomatoes and and uh, uh, mozzarella cheese with basil mm -hmm. and olive and vinaigrette and some uh, toasty breadsticks that we're going to dip in some olive oil and balsamic. Oh my God! <laughs> That's it's easier sounds, to make than it sounds. <laughs> just, just whipping up something light. <laughs> Kathy, take care. Love you, and it was an honor and a pleasure. And I hope we get a chance to chat soon. You're always welcome here. Always welcome. Appreciate it. Have a good night. You take care. Have a good weekend, everyone. You too. Thanks, Kathy. Very special guest, the one and only Kathy Garver. Is she not extraordinary? A beautiful spirit inside and out. And as I mentioned to you when we were preparing for this uh, wonderful interview with Kathy, from those early days when you saw Kathy there on Family Affair and, and so many other wonderful productions, all the way to, to now, to now she is the same loving person inside and out. And she's had an extraordinary career because she's done it right. She's a good person. She cares about people, um, kindness, empathy, warmth. So I know what a lot of you have been saying, and I've been looking at the comments from all around the world, uh, it has solidified something for you tonight that I'm sure you were hoping and that this lovely lady that you have watched on your television and in movies and read her books and all these different things of the years matched what you were hoping. 
And um, I'm sure that a lot of you tonight are very blessed to know that everything that you hoped Kathy Garver was, she is. And um, again, that's sometimes rare in the industry. Um, there she is again when she was playing the role of Sissy Davis on Family Fair and the beautiful and inspirational Kathy today as well. And of course, you finally remember the entire gang with Brian Keith and Sebastian Cabot, and of course, Kathy and Anissa and uh, Johnny Whitaker in Family Affair. You can still get the books that we were talking about as well. You can go to her website, kathygarver.com, and there's a lot of great information there, lots of great videos, a lot of other projects that she's had the opportunity to work on that she has video samples of as well. Of course, the Family Affair cookbook, we were talking about that. Also, holiday recipes for a family affair, delicious recipes as well. Her book, Surviving Sissy, My Family Affair, Life in Hollywood by Kathy Garver with a foreword by Patty Duke. You can still get that as well. Everything on Amazon. Also co-authored, Ex-Child Stars. Where are they now? You might recognize some of those faces as well. Patty Duke, the Olsen twins, Ron Howard there as well. And again, just... Uh, a glorious and amazing person. KathyGarver.com is her website. I'm your host, Jim Masters. I want to toast all of you as well around the world. It's a blessing to have you here on the show. Always a blessing. And I want to show you some of the amazing people that are coming up uh, next week as well. We've got some terrific guests. We are booked. Could you imagine we're booked with guests all the way till August? We launched this show. So many of you wanted me to launch this because you know I do this professionally. And we launched it seven and a half weeks ago. And we have guests all the way until August thus far. The wonderful actress, television, film, and stage actress, Lane Bradbury, who makes her home in the New York area, is going to be joining us here on the show as well. Another dear friend. And another dear friend, Rita Cosby, who is a... Uh, veteran television news anchor and radio host. Uh, she's all excited. She's joining us here on the show as well. And we're very excited to have her here. Uh, several other people that are going to be joining us as well. In the coming weeks, uh, Cindy Williams, who I had an opportunity to um, chat with when she was playing Mother Superior in uh, Nonsense. Friends with uh, the creator of Nonsense, Dan Goggin. So we were talking about um, having an opportunity to uh, talk more, and Cindy will be joining us in a number of weeks, so uh, stay tuned for that. And then another great friend who I've had an opportunity, of course, many of you know I've been on PBS for many years, Sean Wiley is going to be joining us. I've interviewed him multiple times on PBS. He's with Under the Street Lamp, that incredible dance group and um, wonderful singing group and they're very very popular and they've had multiple public television specials sean is going to be joining us in just a couple of weeks a brilliant singer performer dancer choreographer as well we're very excited to have him here coming up in just a couple of weeks on the show also very excited to let you know just uh, announced today that Anne Hampton Calloway, the brilliant and legendary singer and performer, will be joining us here on the Gym Masters show live in just a couple of weeks as well. That was just confirmed today. Uh, very excited about that. Another brilliant uh, actor stage film, television, commercial actor, Danny Bolero is going to be joining us. He's all excited as well. And these are just some of the folks that are going to be joining us here on upcoming episodes of the Gym Masters show live and some great comments coming. It's cool to see the actors from shows that grew up and see how they are now. Absolutely. Uh, Kathleen Cheers, wonderful night and weekend. Um, Anne in Southern California, another great show, Jim. It is my pleasure. I'm glad you enjoyed it and enjoyed our uh, delightful guest, Kathy Garver. What a sweet personality. Absolutely, I concur. Jim, this was a very interesting interview, very informative about her life. Renee says, bye, Kathy, and thank you, Kathy. Kathy. Jacqueline says, love her, great interview. Uh, Ernestine is also looking at Kathy's website right now. Absolutely. Uh, you are toasting, Kathy and I, and thank you very much. We raise a glass to you as well. Cheers, wonderful night and weekend. And uh, Ernestine, good night, Jim, and everyone have a nice evening. God bless all. So we thank you very much. I'll be back tomorrow night. You know, it's Saturday night. We're here every night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, live on the Gym Masters show as well. If you'd like to share this show and see all the episodes, seven weeks plus, we're going on our eighth week here. All you have to do is go to 
my YouTube channel for the show, Jim Masters TV. You can see all the phenomenal interviews and all the great guests and all the levity. We've taken you on location. We've done a lot of great things on this Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. And it's my honor and pleasure to do that. So you can see all the episodes there. Also, we thank you for sharing the links, having your watch parties, and just enjoying the light and levity and love we like to share here on the program, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, every single day. Did I sign up for every single day? Uh, I guess I did, and I'm glad that I did, folks. You guys are the best. So we're going to wrap things up here. We've had a very, very special and delightful conversation with uh, the one and only Kathy Garver. Another great show. Have a great night all. Thank you very much. As long as you guys are there, we will be here as well. So for George and Jeannie and Silver and uh, Jimmy the Clown and all of us, I say one thing, remember, which is very important here on the show. I do this every night when we close. I say, I might be the star and the host and the executive producer and all that jazz, but you guys are truly the stars. You and you, you and you, 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 everybody all around the world, all of you are truly the stars of the Gym Masters Show Live. I truly believe that. And I also say, count your blessings, breathe from the diaphragm, love one another, and relax. Again, life can, as we've learned the last couple of months, life can come at you really fast in unpredictable ways and uncharted ways. So breathe, count your blessings. There are blessings all around us. The sun will come up, the sun will set, the ocean tides will come in and out, the birds will chirp, life goes on. So count your blessings, call your loved ones, stay in touch with everybody, enjoy good people like Kathy Garver and so many others we've had an opportunity to celebrate here on the show. It is a blessing for me to come into your life uh, every single night here on this show and through all of my professional work on television and radio. So relax, breathe, and love one another. That's very, very important. We say that at the end of every show. So good night, everybody. We'll be back 7 p.m. Eastern tomorrow night exclusive, exclusively here on the Gym Master Show. I raise a glass to you. Sip it, too. Mm, delicious. You take care. You have a good night. Everybody's saying good night. Wrapping up here. Jacqueline says good night. And Christine says good night. And Anne says good night. We love you all. This is Jim Masters, your host, thanking you for your time this time till next time right here on the Jim Masters Show Live. Wherever you are around the world, it's a blessing to have you with us. We will see you again tomorrow night right here. All right. Love you all. Take care. and Thanks for being with us. And we thank our very special guest, the lovely and talented, there she is, Kathy Garver. Amazing show. Good night, all. We'll see you again tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.